Hello everyone, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist based in Vienna, Austria. In this video, I test the sleep tracking accuracy of the Garmin Venue SQ against a scientific EEG monitor. As always, I do not want to waste your time, so timestamps are in the description below and also on the timeline. If you're thinking about buying a Garmin watch, or if you're already wearing one, you might be wondering how accurate the sleep tracking is. Well, that's something I will investigate in this video. Garmin uses what it calls advanced sleep monitoring, which tracks what sleep stages you go through each night. It also automatically records when you fall asleep and when you wake up. For the sleep comparison, I wore the Garmin Venue SQ to bed for 7 nights. At the same time, I also wore this portable scientific EEG device and I recorded myself using an infrared camera. The EEG device measures brainwaves and muscle movements. It's called the Hypnodyne ZMAX and is being used by several of my colleagues in scientific studies. If you're interested in this device for scientific studies, I will link it below. I manually went through the recording of the EEG and scored each part of the night for the different sleep stages. I also manually went through the Garmin Venue SQ sleep stages and noted those down in the table so I could analyze them. With the infrared recording I can actually check what my movements were like and see if the Venue SQ correctly predicts when I'm awake. I should mention that Garmin also did its own internal study in collaboration with the University of Kansas Medical Center Sleep Medicine Clinic and I will link this in the description below. In that study, they tested the Garmin VivoSmart 3 on 55 individuals. As a reference, they used a device called the Sleep Profiler. The upside of that study compared to mine is that they included more individuals and in total have more nights of data than I do. The downside of that study is that it was performed and sponsored by Garmin itself, increasing the risk of subconscious or conscious bias in analyzing the results. I will make a separate video about this study, but for now, let's have a look at my results. I will first compare the Venue SQ to the EEG device for each of the individual nights. In the second part of the results, I will share a more statistical analysis. Here we see the first night I recorded. On top, you see the sleep stages as they were recorded using the EEG device. On the horizontal axis, we have the time of night. And as you can see, I went to bed quite late, a little bit after midnight. And on the vertical axis here, we have the different sleep stages. So that's deep sleep, light sleep, REM sleep, and awake. Now these sleep stages are plotted in the order that are usually also displayed in research. On the bottom here, we have a very similar plot, but now for the sleep stages as they were recorded by the Garmin Venue SQ. If we first look at deep sleep according to the EEG, which I marked here in purple, we do see there's a partial overlap between the Garmin Venue SQ and the EEG device. The first deep sleep section here seems to match pretty well, however these last two here seem to be a bit shifted. Next, if we look at REM sleep, we see a pretty good match between the EEG and the Venue SQ. There's this extra bit of REM sleep here towards the end, but otherwise the agreement is pretty decent. To see the sleep cycles, I added non-REM sleep here in blue and again marked REM sleep in red. Each sleep cycle starts with a combination of deep sleep and light sleep, together called non-REM, and it always ends in REM. Now again, non-REM is marked in blue and REM sleep in red. Looking at the sleep cycles, they overlap quite well between the Venue SQ and the EEG device, at least for the most parts. If we were to just look at the Garmin data and specifically look at this little bit of extra REM sleep here, I would have interpreted that as an extra sleep cycle, starting here and ending here. We need to look at more nights to see if this is a consistent problem. But first, let's look at the times that I was awake, and these are marked here in green. And as you can see, there's quite a mismatch between the Venue SQ data and the data I recorded with the EEG. The Venue SQ basically did not record any awake moments during the night, though I had quite a few. For some of these awake moments, I did not move much. So this might be the reason why it wasn't picked up on. During the same night, I also wore the Polar Vantage M, another sleep and fitness tracker, for which I plotted the sleep stages right here. 
So in this plot at the bottom, I display the results of the Polar Vantage M instead of the Garmin Venue SQ. As you can see, the Vantage M performed a bit better at detecting my awake moments, especially here at the end. But it also had difficulty with the awake moments here in the middle. I expect that many wrist-worn activity trackers like the Venue SQ and the Polar Vantage M will experience difficulty tracking awake moments like the ones here that are not accompanied with a lot of movement. Now here I've switched back to the sleep tracking of the Garmin Venue SQ and what I also noticed is that it had some difficulty tracking the time I fell asleep and the time I wake up and the discrepancies I marked here in orange. Specifically it said I fell asleep later than I actually did and it also said that I wake up sooner than I actually did. Now let's have a look at some other nights to see if these results agree. Here we have the second night. If we look at deep sleep again we see there's a partial match. At the beginning of the night the Venue SQ agrees well with the EEG device, however towards the end of the night there are some mismatches. It basically picked up on some deep sleep that wasn't there and also missed some of the deep sleep. REM sleep looks okay for this night, though the Venue SQ did miss two sections of REM sleep, one at the beginning and one at the end. If we look at the sleep cycles this also means that the sleep cycles were not as clearly visible. Based on the Garmin data the first and the last sleep cycle would have been difficult to detect. The awake moments are a bit better in this case, though the Garmin still misses a lot of them. So this makes me think that the Venue SQ is not so sensitive at detecting awake moments. Also, if we look at the moment that I fell asleep, again there is a slight delay by the Venue SQ in detecting sleep onset. Though for this particular night I'm wondering if there was a slight shift in the timestamps of the Venue SQ or the EEG device, since if I shift either of them by a few minutes, the match between awake moments and sleep onset would be a lot better. Let's have a look at the next night to see if the patterns continue. Again for deep sleep we see a good match at the beginning and later during the night the Venue SQ misses some of my deep sleep. Looking at REM sleep this is a bit better for this night. Though the exact locations do not perfectly agree, the overall patterns look quite good. This also means that the sleep cycles are pretty well visible for this night. The awake moment here at the end of the night was correctly detected, but again there is a slight delay in the moment I fell asleep. I will now quickly go through the last few nights to see if the results agree with the previous nights, but also to note where they deviate. For this night we again see good deep sleep agreement at the beginning, but less so at the end. The REM sleep only partially agrees, it's good here and also near the end, but here in the middle it doesn't match so well. That also means that the sleep cycles are mostly visible, though there's one missing here towards the end. Again, my awake moments were pretty poorly detected, and there's a slight delay in sleep onset. For the next night, again we see that deep sleep only has a partial match. Two of the deep sleep segments were well detected, but one of them was missed. The sleep cycles were mostly detected, except for the first one. Here the Venue SQ missed a small segment of REM sleep that indicated the end of that sleep cycle. For this particular night, the awake moment and sleep onset were detected quite well. For the second to last night here, we see that sleep cycle detection is working okay, however near the end it's not so precise. Again the Venue SQ struggled a bit with detecting sleep onset. For the final night, deep sleep was actually detected quite well. Again, sleep cycles are partially visible, but it misses the first cycle. It seems to have some difficulty with the shorter REM segments. And finally, at least for this night, again the awake moments were missed, and the time I fell asleep according to the Venue SQ was later than the actual time I fell asleep. Now that we've visually inspected the individual nights, what does this look like in terms of statistics? Based on what we saw in the individual nights, I would expect decent deep sleep detection, but some of it being confused with light sleep. And I would expect awake detection to be less good than I've seen in other devices. Let's take a look at those statistics. First, let's look at the total percentage of each sleep stage according to the EEG device and the Venue SQ. Overall, this agreement seems to be quite okay. The most noticeable difference is that the Venue SQ predicted more REM sleep and less light sleep. The other sleep stages are pretty close in their total percentages. We can actually check which sleep stages are mostly confused by the Venue SQ. And that's what I displayed here. On top we have the sleep stages according to the EEG device. And on the left the sleep stages according to the Venue SQ. Now each column here sums to 100%. Meaning that we can see what percentage of each of the actual sleep stages was recorded as each sleep stage by the Venue SQ. Let's for instance look at deep sleep. 
If we look at deep sleep, we see that what was deep sleep was indeed mostly predicted as being deep sleep by the venue SQ. And the rest of it was mostly light sleep with a little bit of REM sleep and no awake times, which is good. Next, if we look at light sleep, we indeed see that this was mostly detected as being light sleep, though quite a significant amount was also scored as being REM sleep. Luckily, very little light sleep was actually scored as deep sleep. Now, REM sleep is a bit more problematic. A lot of REM sleep was indeed detected as being REM sleep, but a lot of it was also confused with light sleep. As we saw, the venue SQ also had some difficulty in some moments to pick up on the different sleep cycles, which is related to what we see here. Finally, most awake time was indeed detected as awake time, though it was quite often confused with REM sleep and also with light sleep, and even sometimes with deep sleep. Compared to many other trackers that I tested, this is definitely where the venue SQ performed worst. It appears to be quite insensitive to detecting moments of awakening. When it comes to the sleep tracking quality of the Garmin Venue SQ, I would say there's both good news and bad news. It seems to be able to pick up on some of my deep sleep, and this mostly functions well at the beginning of the night. It is also able to pick up on most of my sleep cycles, but it has some trouble picking up on those parts of the night that consist of shorter REM phases. Additionally, at least for me, it had some trouble picking up on those moments that I was awake. And it had some trouble detecting the moments that I fell asleep. So, would I recommend buying the Garmin Venue SQ? Well, that depends a bit on what you're looking for. If it's specifically sleep you're interested in, then there are probably better alternatives, like the Fitbit Charge series or the Polar Vantage M I looked at last week. My general impression of the sleep tracking is that there are better and worse devices than the Venue SQ, so it lies somewhere in the middle. However, as a general health tracker, the Venue SQ is not too bad. In another video, I discussed that the heart rate accuracy is quite decent after Garmin updated the firmware. Garmin also offers a range of other features, like for instance their body battery score, pulse socks and stress level detection. Now, granted, I still need to test these features, but Garmin does seem committed to developing useful metrics. I should mention some of the limitations of the data that I showed here. First of all, I just tested the Venue SQ on me, and it will be interesting to see how it performs on others. Second, Garmin recommends you wear the device at least two hours before bedtime. However, a few of the nights I only put it on about, I think, 30 minutes before bedtime because I was still testing other devices during the day. This could have influenced the sleep onset detection. Finally, to do a full sleep comparison, it would be good to also test the Venue SQ against a full scientific polysomnography setup. I'm actually building my own polysomnography device using OpenBCI components as we speak. Hopefully, I'll have that up and running within the next two months. That way, I will not have to rely on sleep labs for my testing, which is especially difficult in these times of corona. In my videos, I do scientific tests on different devices like the Aura Ring, the Fitbit and the ScanWatch. And in the end, I hope to use tracking to improve my life. So if you like that subject and like this video, consider subscribing to my channel and also consider giving it a thumbs up because it makes it easier for other people to find my videos. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.